Hey everyone and welcome back to another Shadowlands Alpha video. So, Warfronts, Islands, they sure did have many people, myself included, feeling jaded when Torghast was announced. I mean, I get that. I thought it could be cool, but I was worried it would just be another bolt-on to the game that wasn't that much fun, like with Islands and Warfronts. Well, we've played it. And thus far, on the gameplay front, I can tell you this is the real deal. Seriously, this is a reason to be excited for Shadowlands. This might be the most exciting part of Shadowlands, actually. The fun you can have here, the wild builds your character can have. It sure does produce moments of joy when you're playing through it. And thankfully, unlike Mythic Plus or Horrific Visions, it's not a speed run. There's no timer. So yes, today we have got something rather special and very unique to World of Warcraft to share with you. And imagine the gear you want, region locked at the top of Torghast. Enter today's sponsor, NordVPN. I don't know if they can bypass the content lock of Torghast, but it sure as hell does work here on Earth. You'll get 70% off at $3.49 a month with your first month free with my link down below. Why get a VPN? Simple, right? You want to watch some content? It's in another region, maybe using Netflix? Bam! Use Nord's 5,000 plus servers. Just choose what location you want to be in and use the internet as if you were there. They'll also keep you private. Your ISP won't know what sites you use, so they can't sell your browsing data to advertise uh, nor can they say prioritize some sites that you want to use over other sites. Also, Nord are a Panama registered company, so yeah, your government cannot get to them to breach your privacy. The app and the browser extension are super easy to use, and you can get 70% off and a free month down below at nordvpn.com forward slash gaming. So thank you to them for supporting this channel and this content. And with that said, let's get going. Let's get into Torghast. Torghast is available on Alpha for the Demon Hunter, Mage, Priest, and Warlock, and at least so far, it seems like a triumph. At its core, Torghast is a procedurally generated dungeon for between one and five players. Your goal is simple, to get to the next floor, picking up legendary components and loot along the way. We don't know too much about that aspect of this system yet, so we're going to reserve judgment for now. Though, of course, Blizzard do need to be very careful in how they actually frame Torghast to players. Now, the lose condition in the tower is basically giving up or being blocked by the Taragru. So if you die too many times on a floor, that's three for a solo player, and then scaling up for groups, the Taragru will appear and move towards the exit. If you don't get there first, you are out. Beyond that though, yeah, you can spend as long as you want clearing floors. Deaths reset on each floor, so risky strats or pulls are not catastrophic, and this actually allows for a certain amount of trial and error in your actual pulls, and that means that it fits somewhere between the time trial vibe of a Mythic Plus where every death is a penalty, and then raiding where basically deaths are almost encouraged for the sake of learning. So, as you're actually going through Torghast, you're not going to want to skip enemies or anything. You need to kill them to power up. Most things, including killable urns, uh, they drop Phantasma. Now, certain enemies like Elite, Rares, and some random regular mobs will drop Anima powers. So, Phantasma, that is the Torghast currency that disappears when you leave the tower, and it's used at vendors found in the tower to buy consumables and Anima powers. Now, the Anima powers, they're mostly passive bonuses, but they really are a key feature here because some of them are absolutely wild in how powerful they are. One of the most interesting ones we encountered so far was a mage power that actually reduces movement speed to basically walk speed, but in return, it means that Blink has no cooldown. It takes some time getting used to, yes, but it's a, well, very unique WoW experience, I'll say that. Then, even without fun gimmicks, the powers, they augment your abilities and stats in ways that allow you to focus in on a build. You can get to pick between two or three abilities of different uh, types and rarities whenever the anima powers come up, which basically means that fundamentally, right, this is just standard roguelite design. The fun is in adapting how you play and how you build based on what you're getting, and that can be defensive, purely offensive, or maybe you aiming for a specific synergy, like an exploding a Morat build, as an example. Now, getting this right is going to be the key to making this a super replayable experience for players, and so far, the direction does look pretty darn solid, and it's that stuff that Blizzard are really focusing on with the feedback so far. One standout ability uh, that, we, that we found so far that wasn't really super important or key, but it was a power that increased the damage of Frostbolt when cast while invisible. 
by 2,000%. So stacking up, uh, you know, three of those and hitting the, for, the floor 12 boss for 110k, or about 60% of his health, that was fantastic. That was super satisfying. When I think about just the possibilities enabled by the anima powers, there's so much that Blizzard could do. You know, Unholy DKs with a buffed Death Coil and maybe Raze Ghoul or Apocalypse, they could really give them that Necromancer feel. Uh, maybe you could actually go for a full-on ranged Outlaw Rogue build, as an example. You know, buffing unusual spells, that could make for a really unique and fun experience. So far, Blizzard are rolling out Torghast access quite slowly, and that's to get feedback on specific class powers. So hopefully everyone in the alpha is helping out. And certainly, if you've got any ideas for cool builds for your class, do let us know. Uh, to give you another few examples of build potential, Frost Mages, uh, there was one that was a huge buff to Arcane and Fire Damage, which actually left Arcane Explosion and Fire Blast being really useful, even for Frost. There was one also that buffed the first Blizzard that you would cast on a floor, by 850%, making that a super valuable AoE cooldown. There are then, of course, things like flat stat buffs, like 5 to 15% haste, versatility, etc. But then, think about that. Huge mastery, well, that could allow for a super fast demon hunter or a MM hunter with obscene amounts of range. Basically, there's stuff that can happen in Torghast that's totally out of the bounds of what Blizzard could allow in other contexts. And that means that there's a lot of potential for, well, to put it simply, a lot of fun to happen. So that's a lot about your character and what you're doing, but of course one of the other pillars of enjoying something like this is the enemy design. Overall, I'd say it's reminiscent of Visions, but a lot less frustrating. There are mobs with annoying abilities, yes, but those are somewhat rare. Most of the time, you want to be paying attention to buffs, debuffs, frontal cones, interruptible casts, and AoEs. Basically, a bit of everything that WoW has to offer there. There are even little things like, say, skeletons that explode on death. Nothing is particularly challenging on its own, but paying attention, or sorry, not paying attention, for a few minutes, that could result in an untimely death or two. Rares and elites have got simple enough mechanics and chunky health pools so they can kind of feel like a war of attrition sometimes. Uh, one elite that actually stood out was the Monstrous Guardian. Its mechanic is not super clear initially because of the game having a pretty terrible UI, but once it's clear to you, it's quite fun. It basically swaps between a kite and don't kite phase. Uh, his autos make him stronger and CC immune, but he uses an ability that speeds him up, so there's some stuff to play around there. Not all the enemies are as fun though, and it's very clear that mobs were designed sometimes for specific scenarios that just don't really work. Uh, certainly, like, soloing something when you're a class that's got no fun self-healing or no regular interrupt, that may feel like a, a bit of a nightmare. So, it seems like Blizzard are, at least most of the time, trying to pair back away from that. It's kind of hard to know if this is the right approach, uh, approach though, or if, you know, some sort of system ensuring that those specs don't get unfairly destroyed is necessary. Uh, certainly, having classes be stronger and weaker than each other, that's a natural result of them being distinct, and certainly, I imagine, there are some classes that would struggle a little bit more in Torghast because of that. There are some things also in Torghast that need to be getting used to. There, you know, there seems to be a very low leash tolerance on mobs, and that kind of puts an end to large pulls. Now, that's probably good in the long run, but it's also frustrating when, say, you get that anima power that makes your first blizzard on the floor do 850% damage, which would mean that you would want to do a really, really large pull and just nuke the whole place. So, there are some things like that. Now, as enemies and you get get stronger, abilities do become quite a bit more dangerous. So on this, I think tuning does need a little bit of work. Starting floor 13 or 25 solo did mean that mobs were chunky and punishing, but sometimes with a, you know, you run into a challenge where you just have a limited amount of tools available to you if you were in there as a single player. So it does look like it could be smoother for groups that have got a tank or a healer, but certainly it's a welcome challenge solo if you want it. And certainly if I think about myself, yeah, I'd be pretty interested than that. Then I suppose moving on to other things, well, the major concern that I have right now is, oddly enough, content. Torghast looks to have a solid number of tile sets that do feel different, but are all within the Tower of the Damned. There are plenty of enemies, but, you know, soon you do see the same ones repeated, so there's going to have to be more enemies. And I understand it's in the alpha, so there may be tons more to come, but the principle stands here. Once these become routine after launch, it will inevitably become a bit more boring. If Blizzard decide maybe to put some of their design resources into keeping this feeling fresh with every patch with new enemies and environments, well, that could be a huge win. But if it's just sort of left to languish there after launch, then it could feel stale. So really, at the core of it, right, 
This is just a super gameplay focused part of Shadowlands. If you like fighting enemies in World of Warcraft, Torghast is for you. The lower floors are a bit of a cakewalk, but they enable a fantastic power fantasy. You know, sprinting around with low cooldowns and strong abilities, deleting groups of elites is really satisfying, and it's possible here. You can then come back another time, get new anima powers, and experiment with a new build. If you want an experience reminiscent-ish of the Mage Tower, and you're really wanting to push your class to its limits, then on the higher floors, you can do that. If maybe you and your group of friends are stressed out by the time trial of Mythic Plus, or simply are just bored of the same dungeons over and over again, well, yeah, Torghast actually would be really fun. It would fit in for something just for you to do. The ability to play at any level that you want to and with whoever you want to does make this a very solid addition to the game. It's one that kind of feels a little bit missing in hindsight, to be honest. Like, I had a lot of fun blasting through easy and I also had a lot of fun when really having to try on what they were calling normal mode, which basically starts you off at floor 13 with no anima. And certainly watching Sloot on Twitch and his group make it into the high 30s, that was engaging. And they were having a great time taking it slowly, figuring out builds, and, uh, you know, just taking each pull in a way that honestly reminded me a bit more of learning to clear Cataclysm Heroics from back in the day. So yes, this is a really exciting system, and while it does have issues with early designs and tuning, I will say uh, one thing, right? There's all that potential, and so far, it seems like every, almost everyone's initial reaction and alpha to this has been super positive, but Blizzard, please actually let people play this. And yes, this is me thinking about us coming off the horrific visions. At least from my perspective, I would want to have unlimited access to this, right? Even if that means that they put a hard cap at any possible rewards, this could be some of the most fun gameplay content in World of Warcraft yet, and be some of the longest lasting. Nailing that procedural design early with some well-designed enemies and anima powers, that will go so far to just letting people log into World of Warcraft and maybe they want a more engaged experience and they can just go do that. But Blizzard need to ensure that you are actually able to do this a decent amount so that you don't feel like you've got to do a whole bunch of daily chores in order to get your one or two entries to this per week. It cannot repeat those mistakes of the horrific vision system. Overall though, I will say this. I cannot wait to play this on different specs and classes just to see how they feel, much like with back in the Mage Tower. Certainly from the perspective of having multiple max level alts, Torghast seems extremely fun, and like it really will add a lot of replayability, like playing a roguelite, and you're sort of playing through the same content, but you're doing it on a different class, with different drops, therefore it really does feel new. Blizzard, it's interesting here, they are looking to the rest of the gaming world for solutions, and Torghast being a roguelite dungeon experience, if it's handled correctly, this could fit beautifully into their endgame content slate as long as it does not distract from the other or detract from the other things. Certainly, this is one of the most exciting new features that has been added to a World of Warcraft expansion. This in my estimation right now, this is not Island Expeditions, this is not Warfronts, this is not Garrisons, this is actually good. This is really, really, really fun, and if you look at, I mean, if, if you look at the other alpha testers and what they're saying, it's not just us saying this. There's pretty much, there are some concerns, but it's almost universal, like, praise for how the core of this actually is. Time will be needed to get everything perfected and to, you know, iron out the creases and stuff on Alpha. That's what Alpha's for. And right now I'll say this, it's just brimming with possibility and this absolutely does have me a lot more excited for Shadowlands. And there you have it, man. Oh. God, you know, I was I was worried about Torghast in some ways, right? I just kind of thought, oh, okay, they've, you know, they've announced dungeons, they've announced, uh, you know, there's going to be a raid, there's going to be zones, covenants, you know, things we're used to from expansions. And a lot of people are kind of like, oh, where's the new feature? And then, you know, Torghast has talked about it. And then a lot of people are like, Torghast, well, it's just a big dungeon. Ah, we don't really care. And then, of course, there was all this skepticism after Warfronts and Islands tried to get us excited, and then we played them and they were really kind of boring. I'm really happy to actually hop into one of these new expansion features that the team have clearly put a lot of work into and be able to say to you that, yeah, it's really fun. I mean, I, mean, I, saw, a, I saw a Twitter clip today of a streamer who, you know, every time they, I think it was every time they arcane blasted or something, they spawned mirror images and then the mirror images would do something. So they were just sitting there, you know, hands to the sky, arcane blasting, and all these like mirror images flowing around the place. And you're just like, is that stupid? Yes. Is it fun? Yes. 
Is that something? You can just log in, play some Torghast. That's of course the worry here that, you know, Blizzard will they'll treat it like horrific visions. You know, you'll get three entries a week and uh, every, every failure will make you feel bad. You feel like you can feel behind, because if they do that, they will just shoot this thing in the back of the head. Where really, this is, it's a big toy. It's a game within World of Warcraft that you should just be able to go play and enjoy and try to progress. So hopefully Blizzard are, you know, sensible with it. Hopefully they do that. Certainly I'll say this, the, the core of something incredibly fun is there. Take my word for it, played this in Alpha. Stuff's really good. So there you go, Torghast. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want to help us out and also get some sweet VPN goodness, you can check out our sponsor down below as well. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you next time.